every month I'm going to have three thousand dollars. How could I turn that three thousand into six thousand? What yep. could I create, or what could I get myself invited into to provide value, so much value for other people that I get double my money back? And it's easy to do. You can do it all day long. This is Better Wealth with Caleb Williams. Jay Klein, welcome to the Better Wealth Podcast. Thanks so much. Glad you have glad you're having me. So I gotta give I gotta give a little context. We met um, a couple of years ago. Yep. I remember we had a mutual friend that gave me a call and said, Man, I met this guy in ministry. He's like, I feel like you guys need to talk. He knows a thing or two about like this infinite banking thing. He's like helping people, especially Christians, lean into this idea of stewardship. Yeah. We get on the phone. I hear your story. You hear mine. And you said something to me. You said, you got to write a book. And I, and I said, yes, and I can't because writing is really difficult for me. And I had this belief that I would never do anything in the writing space. And you said, what if I help you? And that, that journey went on. Um, there was ups and downs in that journey. But the result of it was... If it wasn't for you, I would not have a book. And the and asset is very much the key. The book itself was the key that unlocked a lot of opportunities in the speaking world, in the you know podcasting world, and just the relationship building world. And so I want to thank you for number one, um, like believing in me. For number two, being in the trenches, and and number three, um, being a great friend. And I'm I'm excited because you're up to some really amazing things around being a shrewd steward and the ways that you think about money. And we got to reconnect when I went back down to Arizona a couple of weeks ago. And I'm really grateful that you're on the show. Yeah, thanks so much. My, my side of that story is, uh, you know, on the other side of the phone, I had been laboring to try to communicate things to people and kind of in an environment, both within my, with my, in my personal and my professional life, I was limited in what I could say and do. And so I felt like I had come across this concept, some, some different ways of thinking and stuff that I, that I didn't have a voice. I couldn't talk about. And so on the other side of the phone, more than just helping you write a book, I was like, man, if I can and can help pull some things out of you and, and be a voice through you, if I can, if I can find some way to let off this pressure of wanting to be able to help and, and serve people not being able to, cause they don't have a voice or a way to do it. So yep. I am as grateful to have been a part of that, to have had a, have had a chance to, to, to be a part of all the places it's going. You're, you're in Canada now. And, you know, we need to get it translated in Hungarian where I have all of my friends that need your help. And, uh, but to be, to be a part of, to be a part of it is, is a huge blessing in my life. Jay, I want, I want you to walk back to, especially your ministry days. Yeah. And there were, were things about pension plans and there were things that happened that very much made you go down the rabbit hole and, and you started asking questions. Exactly. And that's, those questions were threatening. And so I don't know if you want to start the story there or if you want to give it, go back even further with context, but I, w I want to know who Jay is. I want to know why the shrewd steward, like how it came to be. And I know it wasn't just a thought that you had one day. It was really a journey. Yeah, yeah, for sure it was a journey. I could go, could go way back. I'll, I'll kind of go partly back a little bit before that time in the kind of coming up to 08 and 09, um, before the the big crash and everything, I was uh, I was just paying attention to to different people. I was uh, seeing you know the the fall of the Roman Empire and and you know correlations in, in our, into our, our culture of what do you do when everything around you is crumbling, and uh, and I was concerned about myself and about my family and really kind of you know going you know what what do I do in this situation. And so I went through a journey, a personal journey through uh, Isaiah and Jeremiah, uh, because in the ministry I'm in, my, 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 the way I figure out things is by going to wisdom that's outside of myself and above myself. And uh, walked through Isaiah and Jeremiah, I was really attracted to the, the, the prophets. I was, because that was the kind of era I feel like I was living in. And just learned so many things about just uh, a, a following uh, truth following goodness, 
uh, not just following uh, the structures that had been put in place, even if those structures had originally been uh, been useful or you know full of the kind of structures you ought to follow. And so I just uh, I wasn't disruptive necessarily. I was like, I need to know what I need to do. I need to know what reality is. And that's what I started to learn through that. But once you start to find out what reality is, once you once start to find out how things work, and then you can start to take responsibility to, to make them work for you. So you fast forward to when they closed the, so uh, in my uh, agency, in my missions uh, agency, they closed a part of our retirement plan. And I've been paying into this retirement plan for like, like 10 years, you know, $250 a month into this plan. And, and it doesn't, it didn't work anymore. It failed. And we're getting these kind of, I thought pretty namby-pamby excuses of nobody could have seen it coming, but I saw it coming and other people I know saw it coming. And these uh, excuses about not being uh, in, inaccurate and incomplete explanations about what was going on. And, you know, they had the audacity to tell us what we should do with the paltry amount of funds that we had left over that they didn't lose for us. And what they were recommending people do was just the wrong thing. It was, I knew things. I knew enough to know what was out there and what people could access. Um, and that kind of is a part of my story that uh, I'm a recovering codependent. Uh, you know, codependents place a low priority on their own needs and while they're excessively preoccupied with other people's needs. And kind of, so I had done what I needed to do to, to kind of keep myself afloat. But when he came into this and everybody around me was losing their future, losing their stuff. I was kind of like, uh, you know, it's it's not surprising, you know, go figure, you you lost the majority of the money that I had to you and now want me to do something with it that I shouldn't do with it. You know, surprise, surprise, no big deal. But it 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 bothered me for the people around me. So that's when I, like you said, went down the rabbit hole. I I started showing up to the meetings and and challenging and questioning. Um, why, you know, why it closed and, and what we should do, particularly what we should do with our money. And it was just, I really was flabbergasted, uh, Caleb, at how much resistance I got yep. from the money managers. They weren't financial advisors. They were just the managers of our plan. And they did, kind of did everything they could to shut me down and turn me off and pull me aside and said, this isn't your responsibility. And I'm like, but somebody's got to do it. Right. And so that's what, that's what really set me in this, in this, in this venue of going, how can I help people understand, yep. help people do what's in their best interest, open people's eyes um, and, and help people find what I've found and execute and act on the kinds of principles and ideas that I'm executing and acting on in order to, in order to accomplish a, a substantial, stable, um, a possibility for themselves to really leverage money that they have to provide an income stream to live the life that they've determined to live. Not that they've always desired, not everything you dream for, but what you've determined to live, your why. It's it's interesting because you're in a ministry that thinks differently than the world, i.e. I. like you're, you're talking about, you know, salvation and other things that are really deep. And yet you wouldn't be able to tell at all from the way that they, how they think about money. And I think money is such a, it's such a mirror that goes deeper. It's like, why do you do certain things? And what's sad is some of the brokest people I know are pastors, are yeah. people in mi ministry yeah. and, and are people that care so deeply, but as a result, they're throwing their money away or what they're doing with their money is not, not resulting what they actually want to accomplish. Like they're saying one thing, but it's just a lack of, it's just a lack of understanding. And what's sad is you're asking questions and you're getting, I mean, there was not, you were not embraced and those questions <laughs> were not received well put it lightly. because, because you're a threat and, and in all, and if we're playing the benefit of the doubt, I I'm sure these people didn't intentionally like want to shut things down and they just are taught a certain way. And so it's just like the sheep leading the sheep off the edge and yeah. it's gotta be it's got to be frustrating. And I appreciate you sharing that because I think it sets the stage to what you're doing. And I think a lot of people are able to relate. Yeah. 
and, and it was not, I really do, like, I know these people. I've worked on the national teams with these people. And I know that their motivation was, if people do, like, their motivation really was, people don't have the savvy. People yeah. don't have the, what they need to do what you're doing, which would be in your best interest. They need to do what we think they need to do to be, to take care of even though they have just, they've, you know, the whole thing that they had believed in had just imploded around them. But there's a, a lack of an ability to see what just happened yep. and be able to, 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 to assent that maybe we don't have the best answers here. Right. So, Jay, your process is very unique. And I say that, and yeah. I say that in a really good way, actually, because you have the Dave Ramsey camp that's like, um, be very much like pay off bad debt, all this stuff. Don't spend any money, kind of that. And then you have the Robert Kiyosaki camp where it's like, um, you know, cash is trash kind of deal. Yeah, like go yeah. all into assets, passive cash flow. Well, let's be honest. A lot of people read those books and they don't, the execution of that is just not ideal. You have yeah. something very much in, be, in between that. And so I would like you to walk through your, your, your framework. And I love hearing people's wealth frameworks. And I'm not saying I agree with everything that you do but i think it's really good to take a step back and say why do you teach certain things and in that i love 100 percent the steps that you walk people through one yeah. of the things that really stuck out to me is we have a mutual friend that came to you and you were like double your money yeah and i'm i'm so grateful that you said that because i think a lot of times we get caught up in in this like oh like 30 years of compound interest and all this stuff but let's be honest compounding pennies is really not that great of an idea. Why don't we make so, let, let's make some more money and then compound interest just becomes that much better. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, the, the, um, so this, the, the approach, this, you know, what I put together is a, is a comprehensive stewardship formula that encompasses all of what you're talking about, encompasses the, the, uh, the, the, the part of taking your income and multiplying it by efficiency or budgeting or whatever to create a surplus. And that's the part that you're talking about, the, the, the Ramsey part, the, the be efficient, which you are all about, in order to get a surplus you can do something with. Then on the other side, like you've got the Kiyosaki, that take your capital and multiply it, treat it a certain way, make it do more than it can do by uh, investing in passive assets that throw off passive income, so when your passive income covers your income that you've budgeted, you're financially free. Uh, but for a lot of people, and for me at that point, that bridge between the surplus that I had and the capital that I needed to be able to create passive assets was, was a wide gap. And, uh, and so for people that are either, either it's a wide gap or you could double it, that, that's, where my, that's where my piece comes in, is if you can take your surplus and multiply it, double it by active assets, by actively, shrewdly, wisely, not spending all your time and attention to it, but building some things that to where you can turn every thousand dollars into two thousand dollars before it becomes your capital, then your capital and your passive assets start to take off. And so that's that's kind of the sweet spot. The, the first thing I, I'm actually doing a um, running a, a, a competition. It's called uh, Take the Double Dare. So people could go to take the double dare.com. And what I'm doing, um, I started this on, on campus actually in ministry. Uh, like you said, finances, two things are really core to who we are as human beings, our finances and our sexuality. So I know that if I can get in with some guys and, and shape how they are uh, dealing with their sexuality and how they, are, how they are dealing with their money, I can make transformational difference mm -hmm. in their lives. And so I started this group that my organization was not thrilled with because you actually paid money to be involved in the group. And I was giving you opportunities. I was building off of, off of Kiyosaki. We weren't playing Kiyosaki's cash flow game. We were playing it in real life. I was giving them small and large opportunities and they all had put in the pool uh, to, to do these. And, and you know the number of people who thought I shouldn't be doing this because I was dealing with people's money was, was many. But, but one thing that came out of that was one of the things I put on the table is I, I said, okay, I, here's an opportunity. I will give you $25. If within a month you can double it, give me my 25 back and you keep your 25. Mm. And they all looked at me like, like everybody knows how to get a job and stuff. Like, 
what would I, how would I do this? And we live, I'm in Tucson, Arizona. We're near the border. I could go across the border to any 10 year old kid across the border and give them 50 bucks and say, end of the day, if you can give me, if you can turn it into a hundred, give me back your 50. But people don't know how to do that. They don't know how to think that way. So that's the, the competition I'm doing at take the double dare.com is I've got a thousand dollars to give you. If you can turn that into 2000 and document it along the way, it's, it's a competition and an exhibition. I want people to see this. Mm. I want to give away, I want to give away all of these thousand dollars and have people watch how easy it is for any reasonable, capable person to swiftly and safely double their money. Because if you can do it with a thousand, you can do it with fifteen thousand. You can do it with a hundred thousand. You can do if you can do it with twenty, you can do it. But I'm I'm kind of hitting that thousand dollar mark that that uh, if you could do that, if it takes you a year to do it once, then the next time you do it, it'll take you three months and the next yeah. time you do it. And if you can dial that in, that's, that's what I'm trying to help people do is bridge that gap between their surplus, the surplus they have and the capital they need by dialing in how to double as quickly as possible, every dollar of your surplus. It's, it's a, uh, makes you rethink your thinking because a lot of times the rule of 72, it's like, it will take you a long time, it will 10 take plus long. years. To double your money and you're saying there's potentially a better way what have been some of your favorite stories in how people double their money uh so uh, my favorite stories on how people double their money um well one i'll give you two of them one was a uh, was a um uh, uh guy got a book so got a book it happened to be getting things done uh by by david allen hugely influential to him so uh, brings he's in the, in the book, he's learning, how, he paid like nine bucks for the book. Um, and it, so whenever you set out to do something like double your money, you like quintuple your money. Uh, so he, he, he was reading this book and uh, uh, he leveraged it by, he was in a, a financial, a financial advisor's office, uh, saw how things were organized in the office um, and, uh, and asked how, uh, made some comments about how, how that was done and was hired at $35 an hour for the next month to implement what he'd just been reading the book. And so that's, that's why he, it's like about a $9 book. And I turned that, I leveraged that information into a, into a job, this, into a, into an opportunity that made me this kind of money. Um, uh, another one would be, uh, well, another way that I look at it is, um, so this was, was not just doubling. Another way to think of it is in a percentage. I was talking with a guy about that you find what you look for. Uh, so this is another way to think about percentages, that people are looking to get a return on their money. They're looking to get like a 10% return on their money. That would be fantastic because you know two or three or four or five would be great. And so I was talking uh, through one of the principles, one of the shrewd steward principles of that you find what you look for. It's not, and, and so you, you look for what you want to find. And so instead of, uh, we started with 40%, he, wanted, he said, I want to find a 40% return that would take me a little bit over a year to double that money. And what he found was one that was a, was a, uh, was a bridge loan situation uh, where he got a 20% return every month on every $100,000 that he could bring into that. So it, 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 he was able to more than, you know, he was trying to double double it by doing percentage. If, if yeah. I can get this kind of percent, it will take me a year or so to do. And he got into a situation where he was making 20% a month on what he was doing. So yeah. those kinds of things, it's, 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 all about, uh, it's all about opportunity and leverage and finding this thing, this place where you and I know this is what value is all about. This is what we're doing with the, with, with the situation we, we recently found is how can I add value to somebody yeah. else? and receive the benefit for myself um, yep. as well. And it's, and it's crazy. It's it, when your eyes are open, you just start noticing certain things. Um, exactly. The other day I noticed a green car and there was a comment made that smart people drive green cars. I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm like, <laughs> holy moly, like where are all these green cars coming from? You know, yeah. I started noticing every green car and, and it just, it's just a good example. That's why uh, abundant thinking is so much greater than scarcity. That's why, Playing games like cash flow is 
is amazing because you start understanding and highlighting opportunities out there and there's so much opportunities and one of the things that I, you and i both agree on is you are your greatest asset so i love the idea of like you take specialized knowledge from a book yes. and now you translate that into an opportunity and someone could say oh well you're having to work i i, I hate the concept of passive income from the standpoint of like we're, you're not going to get a fulfilling life if you're being lazy yeah right. do is the goal to have to work to bring in money no but sometimes you got to to create that surplus, we got to roll up our sleeves and get ourselves in, in this position. And that person that got paid $35 an hour probably would have gotten paid 15 or 18 at a, at a job. But by that specialized knowledge, they're almost able to double that. And I want people to, to, to lean into that because a lot of people come to me they're like, Caleb, where should I invest my money and all these things? And I really should point them to you because I got to be careful about investment advice. Sure. But I said, I said, go make more money. Right. Said, what do you mean? Like I, I make no, like double your income and you have to think different to have that mindset. Right. Like, but I promise you, if you do that and you remain like you keep your expenses where they're at, my friend, you can do so many great things in a couple of years because you have a surplus of capital. Right. And that's what I, you know, if you, if you, you've got, you got people who you go, just go, go double your income. Um, I would tweak that a little bit and go double your surplus. You take take this amount. It's two hundred dollars a month. It's it's fifteen hundred dollars a month. It's three thousand dollars a month. Let's take that and let's just think really strategically. What opportunities could we create? We're not just looking for you know that question of where should I put a hundred thousand dollars? What's a good investment? The best investments are the ones you create or get invited into. Right. They're not the ones you find. The one that the you and I are in right together. I invited you into something. Or, yeah. or the the one with the guy at the office, he created one. Yeah. So your best investments are going to be ones you create or get invited into. You, yeah. you put that in your head and go, okay, every month I'm going to have three thousand dollars. How could I turn that three thousand into six thousand? Yeah. What could I create, or what could I get myself invited into, to provide value, so much value for other people that I get double my money back. And it's easy to do. You can do it all day long. So I want to get into the principles and, and like the pillars, wherever we're calling them. But I'm really curious, like, I'm going to just tell you the question that's burning in my head. Okay. How are you economically able to give someone a thousand dollars? Are you actually going to give a thousand dollars to people? And what's the, what's the catch? Because I feel like that's, you're going to, that's going to be amazing for them, but they're kind of getting an interest for your loan. And what happens if they don't deliver? And what happens if a hundred thousand people come to you and you're like, right. I don't know if you're sitting on millions of dollars to do this. Right. So that's where the shrewd part comes in. Uh, that's where in the old days, in my codependent days, I would just be throwing thousand dollars out there. What I'm putting together is a competition and ex exhibition. I have, uh, I have a, I have determined what I can do. And so I've got a number of thousands to give out and I'm expecting to, I'm, uh, and in order to do that, you have to agree to do certain things. You can't just take it and do what you do. You need to do what we're trying to show. So you, I give you a thousand dollars, you document how, what you do with this so that other people can do it too. Like it. And so, so that's what I'm doing. I'm also, I'm actually creating a product for myself. This is my service for people. I show people how to do this. I do it with a bunch of people. They field test it for me. I reward them for that. And then I have, I, I, I can, I can go, okay, I've got, a, I've got a course now. This is how a hundred yeah. people have doubled their money and how you can do it too. We break it down in a step-by-step -step process I like it. and leverage it and teach people how to do it. Because Jay, that's going to, that, I love it. We call it the power of zero. If you can do it with a thousand, you can do it with a hundred, you can do it with 10,000, you can do it with a hundred thousand. Um, when you have success stories, I want to have you back on the podcast with those people Please. and we can talk about those steps because I think the real value is the documentation uh, the successes and failures. Exactly. I think through that, there's a lot of genius. Yeah, there's leverage. You're taking you're taking that thousand dollars and going to leverage a service and a product on the on the back end of that. Exactly. So props exactly. to that. And All right, let's take the service that is going to help hundreds of thousands yeah. of people. Yes, let's talk about the principles. Yeah. I'm coming to you and I'm saying, Jay, I'm really bad at math. I'm really bad at money. I want to be a good steward. I understand that money. I mean, I love how you, you talk about money and sex and you're like, if, if you, if you don't understand who you are, if you don't understand the, your relationship with money, you're going to struggle. I think there's a lot of truth to that. And that's message is not necessarily the most popular right now, right, right. but how do you walk people through 
whether they're Christian or not, how do you walk them through to be good stewards? And what do you mean by shrewd steward as it relates to their money? So um, steward, the steward part is working with what you have. And what you have isn't just your money. It's who you are. Yep. It's your strengths. It's your weaknesses. It's your past history. It's the, the life lessons that people have, have that, that you have. And so uh, each part of um, you know, there's there's three parts to this: the the, uh, the the creating your surplus, the multiplying your surplus to be to to be sufficient capital, and then the the, the deploying your capital. And each one of those, um, uh, we we are we are body, soul, and spirit as as people. There there are uh, we're body, soul, and spirit. And so for in, in each one of those, and walking with through people, what do you need to do? What do you need to? How do you need to operate? What are the external things that have to be in place in order to accomplish that. But those are built on how do you think and how do you feel? What do you tap into? Thoughts, feelings, and choices is who we are at, in our soul as individuals and as people. And so we're working in, ter in terms of thinking differently and, and relating differently, being excited about different things and being frustrated with different things, managing our thoughts and emotions, leveraging our thoughts and emotions and choices as much as we're leveraging the things that we do and the money that we have. And then, and then also the, the internal component, the spiritual component of goodness, of, of, of operating out of principles that are true, right, good uh, at their core. And so each part, each element, each each element of each framework of what you do is, it's not just what you do, it's who you are and what you believe. And you, you, you mesh those together, as you, you, you mentioned the, the, you know, the kind of Christian sense, sense of things, the story of, of, uh, of, of um, I'm blanking, story of the guy in the Bible who, who, who routed the Midianites, Gideon. Um, you know, when Gideon routed the Midianites, uh, it's really interesting because he did it with a very few people and mm -hmm. God had told him he didn't want to, he didn't, he wanted to get the glory. So he wanted to do it with a few little people. But what Gideon did was he tried to make that tiny group of people look as big as it could be. Like he, yeah. he fire pots and let's make a bunch of noise and let's scare the crud out of them. And then maybe we can go get them. And what, and, and it was a good idea. It was a good strategy. It came from good thoughts and, and, and feelings and emotions. And then when he implemented it, God himself allowed those things to be more effective than they yeah. were on their own. And so it's this integrated body, soul, spirit, whole person approach to, man, to creating a significant surplus, to multiplying that into the capital that you need, and then deploying that capital so that you can leverage what you have, everything that you have, not just your money, but everything that you have. Uh, leverage what you have to provide that income river. I like to think of it not as an income stream, but as an income river. I like that. That, uh, that enables you to live the life that you've determined to live, that you have yep. decided this is what I'm about. This is what I'm for. Yep. So creating a surplus, this is this is essentially have money to save because we we all know people that make a lot of money and spend more. Right. And as a result, their consumption eats up their ability to even have a surplus. So, so the first step I would think is looking, starting to audit where your money's going, and say like, how do we, how do we take maybe your four percent savings rate or zero percent savings rate, and how do we create that surplus in what you have? Is that, is there any techniques or questions that go with that? Um, well, the th the thing I would I would say about that is um, one of the ways that I'm approaching things is that if you look at it as that step has to be in place before you do this, you you miss some things. Because some people are wired and excited and motivated about this, this kind of passive income step. And uh, uh, part of my approach is not to go, okay, let's, let's, don't worry about the things you're, you're excited about. Let's do the boring stuff that you don't want to do. And so my, my approach is to find out where people have the most going on. And kind of support them in that area. Like there's there's people that have these side hustles. They're just out there making money and doing stuff. And they're kind of in that, you know, in that multiply sort of thing. And I'm like, okay, I can help you to strategize that better. And we got to start putting this other piece in place. 
Mm-hmm. And so there's always a, in my mind, I want to start where people are and really establish them where they are and then help them to add on the pieces on either side that they need. Uh, so, so that's, that's, that's the, the comprehensive stewardship formula, that thing that I drew out for you and kind of talked through here. All of it's important. Um, and then there's individual things, like you said, in that first part, that efficiency, going through and making sure every dollar has a purpose. That's yeah. there's a bunch of just strategies and tactics in that. And then in the passive uh, side of things, the Kiyosaki side of things, it, it's about uh, rightfully deploying, not just finding assets that work, but ones that work for you, that, yeah. that, that, that are wired to the way you work and that you can be knowledgeable about. You're not just throwing your money into. Right. And then that in between in between space is finding how you're wired um, and how we can quickly and efficiently do more with what you have in that yeah. place. So we're very, very similar. It's my process in a nutshell is get really clear on where you want to go, audit where you're currently at. Let's create some efficiencies yep. and then f- let's put our money into assets. And I, I define an asset as living more intentional, like giving you the ability to have time freedom to do what you truly love, which does mean money, cash flow flowing back to you. And your, I think your claim to fame and what you should, no pun intended, double down on is (laughs) the concept of doubling your money. Because at the end of the day, there's just, we can get all cute with all these things, but the reality is if you have a surplus of $200 a month, let's figure out a way to double that. And the thinking might change versus if you have a ton of money, then then doubling may not be. It's like one of those things where it's it's if you're if you're worth a billion dollars, it's harder to double a billion dollars. Kind of right. Thing. And you right. could you could argue that because you could there's opportunities. But I would I would say there's a lot of opportunities to double hundred or thousand dollars. And part of Warren Buffett's problem is he has too much money. Exactly. And he swings markets on any decision he does. And so. Uh, we don't we don't have that problem. And that's uh, been really honed in on the thousand because it may not be too hard to figure out how to how to how to double ten. You, you just yeah. buy a piece of clothing and sell it for more. And a hundred is a little bit harder, but a thousand that you got to think about how to do that. And if you can think about how to do it, if you can put that work into strategizing it and then know how you did it, then you can leverage that to where you can do it more quickly. And or you can do it with larger sums. Jay, in in the ministry and all the time that you spend with people, what's what's one of the biggest reasons why they're not wealthy or successful? They don't have imagination. They don't think to look and see what's around them. They're uh, so either consumed by or focused on what is that they don't have margin space to see and wonder what could be. And then you pair that with most people have some inherent sense that whatever that is that could be, they're not enough to be able to do and be that. I often say I I believe that people are the most fascinating thing in the universe and ideas are a close second. Mm. Uh, And uh, so if I can leverage ideas for the benefit of people, help people embrace and act on ideas, um, everything's going to be. Jay, I have to say this. um, It's really cool to see you come into a lot of these concepts and I'm excited for the impact that you're going to have because, um, your message needs to be heard and get out and communicated. And so I, I, I'm so grateful that you're on the show. Yeah. I want to pivot a little bit and talk about the and asset because yeah. you were a big part of helping us get this thing out. What have you learned from the and asset, like from working maybe with in our relationship, but then also how does this translate into what you're doing and what you're helping with people? Because I, I know that there's a correlation and I want you to communicate that. Sure. Um, you know what I learned? Well, I learned that I, well, I, I, one of the big things that came out of that was when we, when we came up with the 19 characteristics of the, of a, of a, of an ideal, uh, of an ideal 
I just remember sitting in the room with you and going, how do we break this down? How do we take these, these ideas? And I guess that was what I most, I don't know if it's what I most learned, but it's what I most enjoyed about the process with you is because you had such a clarion idea and, a, and a, just, a, just a, an iron grasp of these big things. And it was so fun for me to try to break them down so that people could understand them. Coming up with the, the microwave idea and how in the same way years ago, people would have thought, why do I need a radar in my house? People think today, why do I need life insurance in my, in my portfolio? And so that was what I most enjoyed. And I think probably most learned through the process. It was the first time that I really got in with somebody and articulated these ideas in ways people could understand. Um, and so that's probably the biggest part that that played in equipping me to do what I'm doing now. Um, but the reality of, um, of the end asset of the master account or, or whatever of, of, of the, you could roll, th roll through what, what it, what it is, what, it, what it's called. Uh, but every person that I work with needs to be beginning and capitalizing their policy. They, it's just, it's foundational to the first part of creating a surplus and budget, which is the problem with, with Ramsey stuff is he, he doesn't, he doesn't talk people through that. Um, it's a, it's a, it's necessary in the middle part because you can, you can, uh, you can be multiplying that through as you're as you're developing capital, and it's and it's necessary in the, in the other part. So, if people can understand the idea, the of the infinite banking concept and the use of insurance as that, you know, one thing that's really interesting. I'd love to talk to you about someday because I'm leveraging, I'm doing the infinite banking concept with another product in order to do something. So, so. Uh, just that reality that in order to uh, to do this comprehensive stewardship uh, pro process, it really is an ideal. It's an ideal project. Everybody needs needs it. They need to understand it. They need to they need to wonder about it. And they um, it it's just part and parcel of what needs to happen. What I what I love about how it interacts with your process is it's not an or it doesn't take away from the money being multiplied and future but it, it very much is a strong foundation and right. and really when you're working with people that want to make a difference for the next generation that want to um, be shrewd stewards a lot of times they they need some you could call it the war chest you could call it the and asset there's a lot of names for it but it's that mindset of money in motion and I think it was it was unique because when we met you've you didn't you not only have heard about the strategy but you were you know implementing the strategy and it was for me it was really fascinating because I'm like oh here's somebody that gets it that's in ministry that has a lot of good things going and they're also doing like they're doing the strategy that I'm like wanting to write about it it's don't believe yeah. in coincidences it was it was super fascinating well, it was cool you know the guy that I called to set up my policy he I was he, he said I was the first person that had ever, you know, called him up and said they want a policy. Everybody's trying to sell it because they're trying to get people yeah. to do it. And I found out the 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 realities of how money worked and what needed to be done, and determined that okay, I need this to do this, and, yep. and got it, and, and am trying to use the snot out of it, leverage it for everything it can do for me. And what I'm doing isn't what everybody else needs to do with yep. it, but it's sure working for me. Yeah, and I think the criticism that you'll get from just what you're talking about is it does take a different way of thinking, and yep. it's threatening to a typical way of thinking about money. <laughs> so right. uh, Jay Klein's not for everybody. Every um, in case you in case you got this far and we're, we're that wondering is for sure. Please unsubscribe <laughs> if you're just going to troll me. And but tell me don't unsubscribe from this show. Ever. I want you to subscribe, hit the like button, and share this with as many people as possible. Dude, I'm fascinated and fired up about your challenge. Like I. I'm thinking we might need to model that um, because I love getting people to think differently. And for very little money, you can change someone's life by just helping them rethink their thinking. Is there anything else that you want to share as it relates to what you're up to, the way that you're thinking, the philosophy? Like, There's a lot to digest in this podcast, but is there anything else that you want to mention before we go on to the legacy question? 
never give up looking for what it is you need. You know, there's a lot out there that says um, never give up on your dreams. And I'm a little bit eh about that because your dreams are they're, they're messy. They're 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 filled with ways that you're broken and things you want that you shouldn't want and all that sort of stuff. But never give up on wondering if there's another way, if there's a if there's a, a better way, if something could be tweaked. It's, never give up uh, looking outside and going, what if I if I knew or understood, what could I relate to in a certain way that would that would make a difference? And never stop looking inside and uh, discovering how much you have, how much you are, how valuable you, you are, and looking inside and going, what can I do with what I have, both externally and internally? You start to put those together and magic starts to happen. I, I think one of the, the biggest things you can do is start believing that something's possible yep. and, and having eyes to see. And that is something to pray about that is something to be encouraged about that's something to be aware of and believing i think both ways believing something is possible and believing that i could yeah. do yeah and and also having the self awareness to say this is where i'm currently at exactly and i think a lot of times my my pushback to a lot of people that are into the you know they're almost too visionary yeah. is yeah, they're yeah, not yeah. self aware to to go like dude you're you need to do some things today trust yeah. me today hundred dollars first right to give you the foundation to have those conversations in the future yeah. jay one of my my favorite questions and you probably got this sense very early on in working with me is i i care deeply about people's final words why they're doing what they're doing in fact the first thing i trademarked was legacy wealth strategy because i was fascinated that we could live our legacy today like it's it really is this fascinating concept and and powerful people that I am that I look up to, they're very much living today with the idea of legacy. If, if this was your last day on earth, and you were with the people that you love the most, and you couldn't give them anything other than a conversation, what would you make sure to highlight in that conversation? The path to your future is through your past and your present, that what happens when we engage with all three of these, all three of our ourselves, our body, soul, and spirit. What happens when we engage with God, when we engage with our thoughts and our emotions, and when we engage with the world around us, is that we turn our struggle into our superpower. That we, if you look at what you have and what it should be at the same time and start to connect those two, how that's, that's, the greatest joys and blessings and fruit of my life have been that mm. connecting where I am with where I would want to be and engaging in that struggle, participating in it, um, making it what I'm doing uh, to live the life that I have for all that it is and incorporating what I don't have in a part of that. Turn your struggle into your superpower. Figure out what I mean by that. Is there any question that you would ask somebody in, in that journey? Um, yeah, it's what is your greatest struggle? Huh. What is your greatest struggle? And, and then I would direct them to body, soul, and spirit. Yep. Enter into that struggle. Solve that struggle. Turn it into your superpower. Yeah, I just want to repeat, what is your what is your greatest struggle? And really look at that from a spiritual level, from a from a mental level, from a physical level, from an external level. I think uh, I think that question is a little very uh, tough to ask, but you could make the statement that it is will be impossible to grow if you're not willing to you know look within and and really address that. So Jay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for the work that you're doing. Um, I always appreciate our conversations and. I know you're going to make a huge impact on on people and changing the way that they think. Tell me again how people can um, plug into you and and support what you're up to. And maybe there's someone on this uh, that will get a thousand dollars from you and double it, which would well, be there's, there's gotta be there's gotta be forty people on this. Thing. I'm <laughs> telling you, if you guys want to get on the Better Wealth podcast, I get a lot of people hitting me up to be on the show. Sure. This might yep. be the easiest get way to the, get on the show. Be a, be a, be a, be a player. Yeah, so, so go to gotta get shrewd 
gotagetshrewd.com. That's where my story is. That's where the, the whole big principles are. So that, that's how you could get connected into, into what we're doing. Uh, and then take the double dare.com. Uh, go if you want to take the dare, send people there if you want to take the dare and, and come to, to watch this whole exhibition of, of how, how, could, how could we do this? I love it. I'm going there right now. I love it. <laughs> uh, Jay, thank you so much. Have a, a, an amazing rest of your day. All right. Thanks, Caleb. Thank you so much for listening to the Better Wealth Podcast. It would mean the world to me if you could hit subscribe, leave a review, and share this with the people that you know and love.